Shalom Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. This broadcast, of course, airing on Patreon, uh, First Dunun Institute, as well as Israeli News Live. Uh, those of you that are subscribers on Patreon, you will be uh, getting part of the information on this video that others will not. And it's mainly uh, because we're dealing with information that's very sensitive, and that type of information is what's I'm very concerned about which would get us banned on YouTube. So that's why we have chosen Patreon is our method of doing it. And as of right now, we're still using YouTube in a private format to upload those videos, but we are going to change that uh, to a secondary source there so that again, we can speak about truth on, on our platform on Patreon here uh, with less fear of censorship and being shut down. At least that's what we have been told. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, also, those of you that are watching on Israeli News Live, many of you guys that are not very much into the religious scene, you're not going to want to just up and turn the video off. I can promise you that. Uh, regardless of what faith you might belong to, whether you are a uh, Christian, a Muslim, or a Jewish uh, person, this information is going to interest you, even if you are not a believer of any sort. You have, no subscri have not subscribed to any one particular religion. You're just independent in your own views. This is going to enlighten you because we're going to be examining the book of Jude, which goes into what I really believe uh, is very troubling information. We're looking into alien life. We're looking into... Uh, what has been happening on the earth and who's involved in this uh, same acts even unto this day. Now, if you're not on Patreon, unfortunately, those of you that are on YouTube uh, that are watching this, Dunun Institute or Israeli News Live, there's parts of this video you will not see because I'm just a little bit more reluctant to release that on there. But I am going to save that to the end of the broadcast uh, and we'll kind of end it there for our YouTube listeners and continue on with our Patreon uh, listener, listeners there for the sake of preserving this information and trying to be less, uh, how would you say it, in the spotlight by the YouTube censorship there. Uh, so let's get right into the broadcast. And by the way, too, I uh, don't want to forget about saying this as well. I'm going to try. We're going to start today. We're going to start trying to air live on YouTube at 9 p.m., our time here in the Czech Republic, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time in the United States and prospectively uh, across the board, your place there, uh, whether you be in Australia, uh, you know, here, of course, in the Czech Republic. I think that's pretty late at night, though, uh, in, the, in Australia. We might need to try to back that up to maybe 8 p.m., our time here locally. All right, I'll do that. Let's let's do that. Let's go to 8 p.m. our time here locally, which would be, uh, what's that, six-hour difference in the United States? I guess that's, yeah, 2 p.m. Eastern in the United States. Uh, Australia, maybe those that stay up late at night will be able to catch it there. <clears throat> we just have so many viewers from around the world. Uh, I know we have them in India, we have them in Iran, we have them all over the place there. So, just a little heads up there, I will start trying to do that because YouTube is not giving you guys notifications. Uh, they blocked that on our system. I think some people still get the notification, but for the most part, they don't. Uh, and also, let me mention this as well, because I'm getting quite a few emails, people wanting to donate to this ministry, uh, but are unable to, even those that have been kind enough to support us in the past. Uh, some problem with getting onto the uh, IsraeliNewsLive.org, not being able to donate there. Uh, two things. One, at the end of the broadcast, our address will appear on the screen, both in the United States and in uh, Europe. You can mail either way. And Patreon is another alternative. And, uh, and of course, it doesn't break the bank. You can choose what you would like to sponsor on there, even if you're just doing a dollar a month, which is $12 a year. Uh, every every little bit is helpful in, in doing so because it's what helps us to make this broadcast and ministry work. So that is another option for those of you that have been blocked uh, as far as trying to give on, um, on our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Many of you still can, but 
but not everybody. And so we appreciate that. Getting right into this broadcast, again, like I said, regardless of what you believe, stay in. You don't want to leave this today. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and call. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now, I'm going to shock you. I'm telling you, you're going to be shocked on a lot of things I'm going to say with you, right? Say to you tonight here, but... Uh, Starting off right here with the common salvation. Uh, if you look at the Greek word right there, the uh, koinos, this can also mean a profane or a defiled or an unholy salvation. In other words, a more common. I kind of think, especially when we get into this whole chapter, you're going to find out that what Jude is talking about is there's two types of faiths that are out there, a very religious but very demonic movement, and yet the true faith, which is that faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And so, please, don't turn it off because I say this. you got to pay attention close because I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to bless you to know what's really going on. You know, so I'm, is, is, you have to take the whole chapter together to understand this. But when he says, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, many times we think of this, in other words, it was common that, that Christ came and died for us, and that's what he's talking about. But I, it could be that, and, and this is just a conjecture, let me make that clear, it could be that he's talking about that they had made the faith common and that he's going to now exhort you to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Okay, now that's pistis, and I'm not a Greek scholar, but I'm just trying to break it down because what God revealed to me made me go and look at the Greek words as well. Pistis is a moral truth, truthfulness of God. All right, so not just a faith, but to take you back to the truth of God, not a common salvation, but the truth that what's really going on, I believe is exactly what Jude was wanting us to see about. All right. So looking at this here, um, and of course he says that was once delivered into the saints, the saints, of course, translates here blameless. Now, as we go into this, you'll understand why he uses the terminology he does. Because there is a side on this earth that are blameless, and there is a side on this earth that are not. Now, I'm not talking about the fact that, uh, you know, oh my gosh, brother, you know, uh, I do things wrong every day. I'm not blameless. That's not what he's going into. Yes, we have an advocate, Christ Jesus, for the perpetuation of our sins. If we do wrong and we confess our sins to the Lord, you know, he's there for us. He'll forgive you. But this is not speaking about that. This is going, this whole chapter goes deeper than that. <clears throat> Let's get into it. For there are certain men crept in unawares who before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? Now, look at the antecedent. All right? Look what happens beforehand. I come to write unto you unto the, uh, of the common salvation. All right? This is why I'm looking at this. I look at the antecedent because then he goes into this these men that have crept in unawares who were before of old ordained. Uh, by the way, uh, Pali is where that word old comes from, which is ancient days. They, they were ordained to this condemnation. In ancient times, who was, who was condemned to the condemnation to begin with? Was it not the fallen angels? Remember what I did the video on Antarctica? They're imprisoned in Antarctica, the fallen angels, and I said that they're still alive. You know, that's just my thoughts, my opinion. I can't say everything is exactly right, friends, but I'm trying to, I want you to see something here because it's going to get very interesting. All right, the ungodly men turning the grace of our God to lasciviousness, and I may not pronounce that word right. That's from the Greek word 
uh, us legia, it's a filthy lust. All right, they turn the word of God to, to, to a lust and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you have to understand, people might say, and I'm going to get into this later in the broadcast for those on Patreon. I can't really go into it now. I, I better just hold it. I, I apologize. I, I love you guys on, on, on YouTube. I really do. And it's not that I'm trying to do something to, to make, oh, you run over here to listen to this. But the censorship is really getting majorly an issue now. I mean, Rick Wiles, Rick Wiles, for heaven's sake. You know, I've never known Rick to say things that are, I mean, I don't listen to Rick all the time by no means, but I've seen a couple of his videos. It's not like he goes really wild out there, but he got banned for life. And that's because they reviewed all of his videos from the past. And he mentioned the Armenian uh, case <laughs> and what happened to the Armenians. And because I guess it offends uh, Erdogan, he got banned. So it makes me feel like we're on the chopping block. So I'm trying to be careful. All right, so in this case here, it's not that when it says they're denying the Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, it's very subtle the way they do it. He says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. So there was something that they knew that we don't know. How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. That's powerful. And he's talking about those that were led astray with James and Jambers and uh, how Korah uh, let, you know, led them astray and then how God came down and separated them. You have to remember, they, what does the Bible say in, in Exodus? There came out a mixed multitude. You know, God's not talking in Exodus. That in other words, oh, by the way, it was Jews and there were some Greeks and there was some... Uh, uh, you know, some Saudis in there and some Egyptians in there. A mixed multitude has to do with children of the fallen angels inbred among them. All right. Now, I've got some notes myself here, so I, I got to make sure I don't miss anything in here because there's some very serious issues that I cannot uh, miss there. Um and by the way, when it says in here in verse 4, let me back up to that. It says they're denying the only Lord God uh, and, and our Lord Jesus Christ. That word denying comes from a Greek word, which is arneonani. I had to scribble some letters out there, so I don't know if I said that right. Uh, but it actually means to contradict. Not that they're actually denying the Lord God, but they're contradicting the Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what makes it valuable looking into the Greek language. It's not to just say that they go out there and say that there's no God and that that's all false. It's that they are, deny they are contradicting the teachings of Jesus Christ. So he says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, that how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterwards, destroyed uh, all them that, that believed not. Lost where my mouse is here. There we go. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, yet reserved an everlasting change into the darkness and the, uh, unto the judgment of the great day. Now, you have to understand, Jude is writing you something for you to get it. So it actually, it goes together. Verse 5, verse 6 goes together. All right, let's look and see what we see. So the first estates, the RK, they left being their, their first estate, being that they were archangels. And they left their rank or their position, as the Greek word goes there. And what did they do? They... Uh, they kept not their first estate, but their, but left their own habitation. You know, the Greek word right there for the habitation, and I didn't write down the Greek word itself, uh, but it's their house. I think that means their body. 
because when we begin to look into some of the apocryphal writings, they were able to transform themselves to make themselves appear as if they were the husbands of these women that they ended up having sex with. So when people are writing and they say, well, you know, Steve, according to Enoch, these, these angels were giant, you know, where they produced giants, and that these angels that came down, how could they have ever had sex with these women? They were giants. They, according to what Jude says, they literally left, they departed, and I'm trying to look at my notes at so the same time here, their rank, their position, their habitation, they left their physical bodies and or, tra or, or as it says in the Apocrypha, transform themselves into men that look just like their husbands. So when they came down on the earth, they were not giants any longer. So it wasn't that women were trying to have sex with some guy that's, you know, 20 feet tall, 30 feet tall, whatever the height of the guy is supposed to be. Jude is showing you they left this. All right? And so therefore... Yes, in some cases they're born as giants, but what about these ones that were coming out in the, as a mixed multitude in Egypt? All right? Now, he goes again, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth as an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. What strange flesh? I know most people would think it's homosexuality. I'm beginning to wonder if what Jude is trying to write, because everything he's writing up here is all about what, the, like in the case verse 6 there, this is what the fallen angels did. They did not keep their first estate. They left their own habitation. And as I said, the Greek word is literally their house. It, you know, we could say that it, uh, you know, that it was where they dwelt at in a heavenly place. Maybe that's the case. I can't say for sure. But it also makes me think, because we know the Bible always refers to our body as our house where we live at. Our, this is our habitation. And they came down in this earth here, and, they, and we know that their judgment is a, as a result of what they did on this earth. All right? So when he gets to Sodom and Gomorrah, he talks about what happens there, and that they're going after strange flesh, giving themselves over to fornication. All right? Fornicate, I mean, we were talking about adultery. And suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these, watch this. The word filthy is not really in there. Also, these dreamers defiled the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. This, this is where it gets interesting. These dreamers, now they put the word filthy. If it's italicized, it's not in the original Greek. So likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh. All right? And they despise dominion. Hey, let me share with something here. The, the word in the, that they use for defile in here, uh, myeno, is to contaminate. So, these dreamers contaminate the flesh. Remember what God says over in Genesis, let every seed bring forth of its kind. I'll talk about that as well at the end of the broadcast. Just let me remind myself of that. I gotta, I gotta make sure. Every seed of its kind. And I'm sure there's some of these things I could probably say on YouTube, but you know, just for the sake of safety purposes, we won't say it at this point. Yet, okay, so, yet Michael the archangel, and we're going to come back to this in just a second, verse 8. When contending with the devil, disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. What has this got to do with what Judah's saying? You know, uh, Chuck Missler asked me about this one. That's another one that he asked me about. And, and the Lord revealed to me a lot about what this is about, but it's even deeper. All right. Here it is. Likewise, also, these dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion. See, they, they, they contaminate their domain and speak evil 
They can, in other words, what are they doing? What are they contaminating? They're contaminating these physical bodies, and in doing so, they're doing what? You have to go back to the beginning of the chapter. They're, they're basically, they're just going with a common salvation. They think everything's all hunky-dory. But Jude is trying to get you back to the truth of God's word. Because Jude is showing you how in there, there is a serpent race out here. Like they have these, uh, the, the, these reptilians as they call them. There is a true reptilian race on this earth, which reminds me of so many passages in the Bible. And maybe we'll look some up while we're on here. Jesus talks about uh, you generation of vipers. Isn't that what it says there? Let's, let's just quickly, let's go to it. I, I've got to see if that's not exactly the case here. Uh, Vipers, generation, maybe that was John that says that. Um, yes, here we go right here, Matthew 12, 34. Oh, generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh? All right, also later, when he gets to chapter 23, you serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? They were intermingled even in the times of Yeshua. Jeez. And John the same says, Then said he to the multitude that came forth to baptize of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come. You know why? They don't. They don't warn them to flee. You know why? Because they're just part of that common faith. And again, please, I just, I feel it. You know, it bothers people. I don't mean it bad, friends. Because the true faith is what he wanted you to earnestly contend for. Contend for the truth. Fight for it. You've got to dig. You've got to really look and search and study and search it out to know what the truth is. Don't accept some common faith. We're going to get into it in a moment where that comes from. So generation of serpents and vipers, Matthew 12 and also Matthew chapter 23. How can you escape the damnation of hell? See, most people think, well, you know, God, he's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. That's right, he doesn't want his own to perish because he knows there's coming a judgment, and that's what Jude is looking at. Now, let's jump back over here again. So, the dreamers, they defile, all right? They defile their dominion, and then they speak evil against the dignities. <clears throat> a lot of people think that's government officials. It's not. <laughs> Again, it's the antecedent, verse, the antecedent of verse 9. Yet Michael, the archangel, when continuing with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Why? Because what is the restoration of the word of God in this day? Remember when God said, or Jesus says uh, concerning Elijah, when they asked him about Elijah, they said, well, I thought the scribes and Pharisees had said that Elias must first come. He said, he truly, he shall first come and what? And restore all things. Now, most people can believe that Elijah is coming. They say, well, Elijah never died. He's coming back. But when it comes to Moses, they just don't believe it. Even though we have, let me pull it up. Even though we have in Deuteronomy, all right, I think it's chapter 34, or no, is it Exodus? I'm sorry, Exodus, I believe it is. Let me see, I think it's chapter 34. Um, this is when Moses, God makes a promise to him, and he said, now I found grace, and I said, O Lord, let thy... Yeah, okay, here it is, verse 10. Exodus chapter 34, and he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all thy people, and I will do marvels such as have not been wrought in all the earth nor in any nation, and all the people among thou which thou art shalt see the work of the Lord that I am about to do with thee, that it is tremendous, not marvelous, wonders. It's, it's, uh, it's right in here. What is it? Uh, Nephilot. Uh, it's hard to transform from one to the other. Here we go right here. Uh, 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 
עושה, עושה נפלות אשר לא uh, נבראות בכוח הארץ, אוקיי? Okay? He's going to do wonders. And even the rabbis say, well, we changed it to marvels because, you know, Moses died and he never did anything any greater. So how could he do something greater? Trying to interpret the word of God in their own way. That's not the way God does it. All right. And so when we look back at what Jude is saying over here, what does Jude say? All right. Jude said, and they speak evil of dignities. That's actually the glorious ones. It's your two witnesses. That's why Jude says in verse 9, Yet Michael the archangel, when continuing with the, contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. You know, there's two reasons why he was there disputing over this. One, because the, the, the truth of the gospel... And Jesus taught that Elias would return as well, but it's also taught throughout the entire Bible that there are two witnesses. Revelation speaks of it, chapter 11. We have it in Zechariah. We have it in Isaiah 61. We have it, uh, we have God speaking to Moses that he would be back over in the Song of Moses in Exodus uh, 15, where he says, Asherah, Ladonai, Ga'aga, Ovev, Kevev, excuse me, I'm actually getting it part of it, right? And the rest of it mixed up, but we'll just go there real quick. See, he speaks about it. We see it also in Micah chapter 7, where this one that comes back with this rod, this rod of his DNA, so to speak, uh, and, you know, all these miracles are being done, and nobody pays attention. So he says, Az Yashir Moshe, Uvenei Yisrael, okay, the song, then saying Moses is the children of Israel, Et Hashira Hazot, this song, okay, Ladonai veyomer leomor, I will sing unto the Lord that I have gotten victory over the horse and his rider and they've been thrown into the sea. That's the Antichrist spirit. Still never been fulfilled. So Jude is speaking about this. The, the glorious ones is really the right way to translate that word right there. And when they're using this Greek word here, that, you know, they speak evil. Of the glorious ones. Just like we have in Psalm 83. And they have consulted against thy hidden ones. Because why? They know they're coming back to restore the word of God. They know that Moses knows everything about what happened in Sodom, or excuse me, in the times of uh, in e when they came out of Egypt and God had to destroy them. You know, when, when you get the common version of the gospel preached in all these churches, we just find out the watered down side of it. Well, they were not obeying God. They don't ever tell you they were a serpent reptilian race of people. All right, that's what they don't tell you. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But they that know naturally are brute beast in those things they corrupt themselves. Jeez. Ah, there's another one here. Let me find it real quick here because um, there was a particular word in here I did not want to pass by. Ah, yes. Let me see. Maybe I haven't got to it yet. That's where he speaks of the enchanter. Continuing with the devil, he disputed the body of Moses. Okay. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. All right. But they know naturally as brute beasts and those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam. For reward and perish in the gains they have courted. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are with, without water, carried about. Uh, about of winds. Trees whose fruit wither without fruit. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. See, they have no fruit because there's no seed of life in them. All right, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars. Notice that again, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. The wandering stars are the fallen angels. 
And they're in amongst the, the apostles, or, you know, the, the, the believers after the apostles' time back then. So those fallen angels had found a way to get back in. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are numerous complainers walking after their own lust, their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration before because of advantage. <laughs> we'll talk about that too. Ah, jeez. But beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last days who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up your yourselves only, uh, excuse me, on your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Now, I did miss the verbiage where he says the uh, enchanter. Let me back up because I don't want to miss that here. Now, I don't know how I missed this. Anyway, when it uses the word enchanter, and uh, maybe it's in verse six here. I, I've lost it now. Anyway, the word enchanter is also from Nachash, which is a serpent. Oh, I, I think that's over in Deuteronomy. Let me switch over here because I wanted to kind of share with you. We, we see that Jude clearly identifies a reptilian race when you begin to look at it. He is showing you these, I, I say reptilian, it's the fallen angels is what he calls it. Uh, but I, that, that's kind of a loose term. Maybe I shouldn't use it like that there. This is exactly what, though, people are looking at as far as the what, what they call the reptilian race. But these are your fallen angels that he's talking about, and they have come back over and over again, and that's what that's exactly what Jude is showing us here. Now we can also find this in Deuteronomy and in Leviticus chapter 20. If you look in Deuteronomy, there shall not be found among you any of uh, anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, uh, his, or his daughter to pass through the fire, one that uses divination or a soothsayer or an enchanter or a sorcerer. See? An enchanter or a sorcerer or a charmer or one that consulteth a, a ghost or a familiar spirit or a nucomancer for whosoever doeth these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of this, uh, these abominations, the Lord thy God is driving them out from before thee. See, so he's going into it back then. They already have this problem. And this is where I've said before, what is he talking about? They pass through the fire to Molech. That's where they're literally going there and they're impregnating these women, or vice versa, the men, and they're bringing about this demonic beings. And that's exactly what Jude is showing us in, his, in what he's saying. Let me back up to Jude real quick before I go over to Leviticus. Okay, there are therefore certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. In other words, of ancient times, they were, they were ordained to destruction. Only the fallen angels were like that, right? And he says they're turning the grace of God into a lasciviousness. See, again, we back up just a little bit. That lasciviousness, filthy, lustful, okay? That's why he says, he comes up here and he starts off, you know, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith that was, which was once delivered unto the saints. And okay, I, may, I realize some may say, no, brother, the common salvation is, in other words, that simple knowledge of knowing that Jesus Christ is Lord. I agree with that part. I can, I can accept that. But if you look at the Greek terminology that is used there, the koinos, this can also mean profane, defile, or unholy. You know? They, in other words, they have profaned the gospel. All right? But there, and what is, I will therefore put you in remembrance, so you once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. That's what we're finding out over here in Deuteronomy. Exactly. For what reason? They're passing their children through the fire to Molech. 
That's exactly why. All right. Let me back up here. I think I was wanted to. Let's see. Okay. Let me let's move on over to Leviticus now. Moreover, thou shalt say, verse two. Uh, we're in chapter twenty. The children of Israel, whosoever he of the children of Israel or of the strangers that so sojourn in Israel that giveth of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I also will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he hath given of his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. Now, a lot of people believe this is just, in other words, they burn their children to Molech, and maybe there was that going on as well. But when God says, you defile my sanctuary, he says, a body has made me. See? The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, but a body has thou made prepared for me. And we know that represents the coming of the Mashiach, the Christ, which was Yeshua. But it also represents you as a temple that God comes down and invites and lives in. And that's the way he wanted to do. And so therefore, he says, when you give your seed to Molech to defile my sanctuary, God will not live in a temple that is defiled, that has been cross contaminated. When he says in Genesis, let every seed bring forth of its kind. That's including human beings. We're not to be intermixed with other demonic beings like these fallen angels that came down that did not keep their own habitation, but instead came down here, transformed themselves into human, to look like the husbands of these women and, and, and seduced them and had children by them. All right? Now, so he says, I also will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he hath given of his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary, to profane my holy name. And if the people of the land do all do at all hide their eyes from that man when he goeth of his seed unto Molech and put him not to death, then I will set my face against that man and against his family. And I will cut him off that they go astray after him and go astray after Molech from among their people. This is what's really going on, friends. It's not what you think. It's not what you think. You, you, you'd really be surprised. And we're going to Pause just for a minute. Those of you that are watching on YouTube, if you want to see the rest of it, go to Patreon. Get on there and, and watch the rest of this. But I have to do part of this because now we're going to get serious and mention who's involved in it.